Hi everyone, it's Lauren and welcome to my 20k subscriber Q&A celebration video. You asked me some questions and I'm going to answer them whilst drinking. Um, it's not quite lunchtime yet <laughs> while I'm filming this, so I have given myself a breakfast cocktail, um, an Aperol spritz. This is the first time I've made one of these. I'm not sure if I've got the kind of quantities exactly correct because it or maybe I need to stir it. I think the Aperol's got a little bit stuck at the bottom, but I quite like the little effect. So cheers. Hopefully you're watching this in the evening so that you can have a tipple along with me. I don't really condone um, early morning drinking. It's not that early. So let's get to the questions. I am really nervous with the fact I've got my phone in one hand and my drink in the other. Like this could go very, very wrong. Let's go to YouTube first and have a look at the questions. I've looked at some of these already because obviously I've seen them come in over the last couple of days, um, but I haven't picked my answers out um, for any of these. So let's see, this, this might get a little bit interesting. The first question I'll do, I've actually had a couple of questions sort of related to this topic, um, but Alive as always has asked, can I speak any other languages? And if yes, um, have I read, would I read any other books in those languages? And I've had other people ask me if I've read books in other languages as well. And no, <laughs> like, I just feel really silly. Like, have you read a book in another language? Like, I mean, I can very, very slightly speak a few languages, but not really enough to read a whole book. I could, I could maybe read a children's book in French, but I, I think that would be a struggle. Um, I speak, kind, I would say intermediate, but probably probably not quite intermediate, like elementary beginner level French, Spanish, and I've just started to teach myself Mandarin as well, um, which I did do a little bit before a long while ago, so I'm, I kind of thought I'd try and learn it again. I use the Duolingo app on my phone and I use a Rosetta Stone um, platform thing on my computer, which has served me quite well. I do enjoy languages um, and I do enjoy learning them and I wish I could be fluent um, in languages, but I'm just not, I'm not quite there enough yet to really read a book. Truly Madly Kids asks, what is your favourite part of London? Um, ooh, what's my favourite part of London? I feel like there's places in London that I really like, but I don't actually go that much. The places that I always tend to be are really central, like on the South Bank, um, near the National Theatre and like Waterloo Station area, because that's just where my, me and my friends tend to hang out because we do go to the theatre a lot, so we're always kind of round that, um, the Strand, Leicester Square, Covent Garden, that really central area of London where all the theatres are, um, or we tend to kind of hang out on the South Bank near Waterloo where kind of all the artsy people are, <laughs> it's artsy people, I don't know, it, it's all quite touristy though, so I don't know if that's like my favourite part of London, it's a part of London where I spend most of my time, and I spend most of my time walking around it going, oh these tourists, I need to get out of my way. Well, this is a fun question, Anthony Andrews has asked, what's my favourite and worst book ever. Oh, favourite and worst book for 2018 and also favourite and worst book ever. Right, okay. Um, favourite book, favorite, okay, favourite book of 2018. I am going to do a video halfway through 2018 letting, letting you know like my favourite book so far and also one at the end of the year. I think so far this year it has to be Three Things About Elsie by Joanna Cannon just because I did look back on my Goodreads and I've given lots of things four stars and that's the only thing I've given five stars and it did actually make me physically cry which doesn't happen often with books because I do have a half stone. Um, so I think that's just, in terms of my own enjoyability, I was just so in it. Probably my fave so far. Least favourite so far, I think, was probably um, The Gap of Time by Jeanette Winderson, which is a retelling of The Winter's Tale by William Shakespeare. But I really had really high hopes for it and I just thought it was so waft and just nothing. So that really disappointed me. Favourite and worst book ever, I can't, Favourite book ever is a really, that's really difficult. My worst book ever, I think, is a book I read about two or three years ago um, and I read a proof of it and it was called Future Sex. It was a non-fiction book about different people that have sex basically, but it wasn't really structured properly um, and all the chapters were just completely random and the actual writing was so bad. I wish I had it here so I could read sentences from it aloud to you. Like the, It was so pretentious and it thought it was so clever and I had no time for it because it's the kind of book that just because it's got sex in the title and it's about sex, publishers publish it because they think, oh cool, everyone's going to buy this book. And I was like, no, it just doesn't, undeserving book. Um, Favourite book ever? Favourite book? Oh my god. It might be Anna Karenina. I, I love Anna and I've read that a couple of times. My favourite book is drinking. Ali Reeds has asked, how can someone grow their booktube channel? I think I've had other people 
ask about tips about book tubing as well. I'm sure I've seen some something like that. So, um, I mean, I have done a whole series on how to start a booktube channel and how to kind of find growth and all of that stuff. So I'll link that here and in the description box below. I've done videos on everything, um, but I have done a specific video on making friends and getting views and growing your channel. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know. This is so loud <laughs> with all like the ice. Um, I don't know that I have exact tips because I think it's different for everyone and I don't really know how I've grown. <laughs> So I couldn't say to you, well, you know, I was doing rubbish and then I did these five things and then I got more subscribers. Like, I don't, I don't really know. I think you've just got to want to do it for the sake of doing it. And you've got to want to make friends with people and connect with people um, and comment on other people's videos, which is something I'm very bad at. I often watch people's videos and think, oh, that's good. And then don't say anything. So how do they know that I'm there and they know that I'm watching and how do they know that I enjoyed their content? And you need to engage and I should do that more. Um, and I think how, getting part of the community then helps you grow your channel in other ways. That's the kind of the overall tip I would give. But if you want more tips, you can go and look at that video. Oh, this is a good one. So SM Tweet 07 has asked me about ballet. So um, they've said, you've mentioned one of your interests is dance, specifically ballet. I was wondering whether you have continued dancing and if so, how are you finding it? And if I could recommend any fiction and or non-fiction books related to the ballet world, I can do that as well. Um, yes, I am still dancing. So I started, I used to dance ballet up until the age of 18 and then went to uni and got drunk and stopped dancing. And then I started it again probably seriously two or, th two or three years ago. And I just found an open class in London where you could just go along. I found a proper school where you like, I say a school, it makes me sound like I'm literally going to the Royal Ballet School. But I found a proper teacher who does classes um, in, a t in term blocks and um, she does do point as well. So I started doing that last year. So that's been a year that I've been going to that, that school. And this term I'm doing two classes a week, ideally, although I obviously stuff happens and I don't do that. My ideal thing is I do two of these classes a week and then one of the drop-in classes that I used to do on a Sunday. And it's going, it's going really well actually. Like I'm really pleased with my own progress because this is a much better class because there's a teacher who gets to know you and corrects you and in an open class, it's very, very vague in general and you do get corrections, but it's, not directed at you. So I am absolutely loving it. I loved getting back on my point shoes, which I did last September. Um, I'm kind of going up the point level classes now. I'm just getting to a much more challenging level. Um, so things are getting quite difficult now. My current nemesis, I don't know if this will make sense to anyone, my current nemesis is the double pirouette. I'm really trying to get get my neck of that, that's really difficult. Most of ballet class is looking ridiculous, everyone in the class, um, to no exception. It's all practice, so most most evenings we're all sort of looking really just really awful and ungraceful and you're falling over, um, because if you don't do ballet precisely, it looks crap, like there's, it's either perfect or nothing, there's kind of no in between. And in terms of books, on ballet, I've got some on my shelf, I'll go get them. So non-fiction, this is pretty comprehensive, Apollo's Angels by Jennifer Homans, and it starts from like 16th century France, like it's literally the origins of ballet and then how it swept through Europe. She talks about Denmark and the Danish tradition, she talks about Russia, and I feel she goes to, does she go to Italy? I can't remember, oh, yeah, Italy, obviously France, um, a little bit about UK and modern ballet, and then a lot about um, NYC ballet, because that is where she used to be a dancer, I think, so there's a lot of Georges Balanchine in here. This is the only other fiction book I've read about ballet, The Crane's Dance, and it's about two sisters. Um, it's a little bit how I imagine, I've not seen Black Swan, but it, it, it's how I imagine that sort of film being. It's about two sisters and about their struggles and jealousies in a ballet company and how that kind of um, takes its toll on their mental health. Um, to be fair, like I've just always wanted to be a professional ballerina and even though I'm reading this and they're going through so much pain, I'm like, mm, I still want to do that though. <laughs> but you know, it's easy for me to say when I don't have to go through the pain. I'm really sorry if I'm talking too fast, by the way, because I talk too fast all the time. And when I'm doing something casual, like just chatting, I feel like it's even worse um, than if I'm just trying to review a book. So I'm <laughs> sorry, I hope you can understand me. Oh, I like this question. Tash Talks Tons has said, is there any questions you expect slash want to get asked, but never do? 
That's really interesting. No, not really. It's not like I'm hoping someone asks me this one question so that I can tell you about something. Um, but I am surprised normally about how many questions I get about books. Be I mean, that sounds like a bit of a silly thing to say, but I feel like I talk about books all the time. So when I do like a QA, and a it surprises me that people say things like, what's your favourite book? Or I don't know, just for an example, because I think, don't I say that a lot? <laughs> don't I talk about these things all the time? Wouldn't you want to hear about something else? Panja Blue asks, what? Uh, you studied maths at uni, didn't you? Does your job relate to that in any way? Um, out of work, life, university and school, which one was your favourite? Also, where would you most like to visit? Ooh, there's lots of wide ranging questions in that one. I did study maths at uni. My job, like, it's a financial job. I'm, I'm basically, I'm training to be a commodity trader. I mean, I, like I look at numbers a lot, but I'm not using equations. Like it's much more analytical. My favourite from work, university or school? I mean, that's really difficult because there's good and bad things about everything. Like at the moment, I feel like I'm going through a massive school nostalgia thing. Like the other day, me and my friends were watching. So I'm so pleased that YouTube wasn't a thing while I was at school because now all these kids that go to our school now put videos up of themselves on YouTube and there's all these like school videos. I think it's when they leave in year 13, they put on this big video of their whole year or they do these funny music videos and it's all on YouTube. And that definitely would have been me and I'm glad there's no evidence of that. But I was watching it all like, oh, school. But I hated school. I don't know why I think that, like at school, I could not wait to leave and I just hated it and I was really shy and awkward and I just didn't, oh, I just, I hated that whole environment. I was so looking forward to university and I do feel like university is when I came into my own and got more confident and like made more friends and sort of under, got to know myself. Um, so, I guess school can't be my favourite, but at the, at the moment I'm like, oh, isn't that a nice, easy life, just going to school and then going to drama club and like, oh, I just had no cares. I don't know why I cared so much about all this other crap. I don't know. I miss the holidays at uni. I miss the free time you had at uni. I miss that everyone you like is in one place. It's kind of being like at a holiday camp. Um, and everyone's free, like at the same time, it, like you can all hang out all the time and that is really nice, but also you just, ha you are so poor, you have no money and you're constantly worried about like, but when I leave uni, what am I gonna do now? So I think probably on balance, work is better. And where would I most like to visit? Um, I really wanna go to New Zealand so much. So for our honeymoon, I think we're gonna do South America if we get it booked, because I always wanted to go to Machu Picchu as well. Um, and I, then I wanted to go to Chile, back to Chile and take Will and go to Patagonia, that, I think that's what we're gonna do for our honeymoon. But the other big thing I wanna do so much and I really wanna do like before I have kids is go to New Zealand and go to Hobbiton, <laughs> basically. Like I also, maybe I'm building up a little bit in my head, but I already feel like if I, if I ever go to Hobbiton, I will cry the whole time I'm there. Um, I just, I really, really, I want to go there so much. And I, that's why I want to go without children, because I don't want my kids to be like, mum is such a loser, she's crying, like in the green dragon. What is your diet like when you train for a marathon? Um, Actually, if you're interested in more, I've done a QA and a specifically on marathon stuff, so I'll link that there and below and let you know about what it was like to train for a marathon and stuff. Um, my diet was the same. I didn't, I thought I would get really healthy and I, to be honest, I thought I would lose a lot of weight, which I did not do. I put on weight, if anything. I'd have like a specific breakfast I'd do before a big run. And I'd eat things like rice and potatoes like the day before. But overall, it was about the same. I just ate a little bit more because I was hungry all the time. Um, but I didn't change what I ate particularly. <laughs> Maybe I should have done. Maybe I would have got a better time. Well, can you make me another drink? Can you make me another drink? Can you have another drink? Yes, please. Someone asked me about running, didn't they? Ah, oh, yeah, here we go. Um, are you gonna do more videos on running? I mean, I could. I'm not running as much now. It was interesting, I think, the running videos because it was getting longer and longer and I was learning new things and kind of each month, each week, um, I had to do something different. I don't think it would be that interesting for you if it was just me, oh, today I went on a run like I do every Sunday or something. I don't think that would be quite as interesting. And I'm also doing other things now. Like I wanted to focus more on ballet and like Pilates and like, I wanted to do the stuff that I didn't have time to do when I was running. <gasps> Thank you. Oh, that look, that's looking very ap aperoli. That's what I was going for. Oh. Just by the way. Did you it... stir it up then? Is that why? No. Oh. So second aperol before 12. 
All Ooh. right, say it louder for the video. I've told them it's not quite lunchtime. Ooh, I'd like to know if you would write a book and if so, in what genre? Hmm, I would, I would write a book, but if I wrote a book, it would be non-fiction. I would not write fiction or poetry. I like, the thing is, with anything like writing, I know it's a skill and you have to hone it. And if you wanted to do it, you know, you could work really hard at it. I have tried whenever I've felt inspired to write a poem or write something and it, it's horrific. Like when I have thought, oh yeah, I could, I could write something about that and I've tried, I've just been like, what the hell is that? It's so bad. Um, but I do think I could write non-fiction. But I'd also have to feel like I was saying something and that it was worth saying and that it's, you know, a market that isn't being filled. I certainly wouldn't, like if I ever wrote a book, I wouldn't want it to be like a YouTuber book. I mean, because I am a big famous YouTuber, I don't know if you've heard, um, but I wouldn't want it to be that sort of, I'm Lauren and this is my life, just because I feel like there's no there's no need for that. Like, f I don't feel like anybody would be getting anything by me writing something like that. Like, it would have to be about a topic. Um, you know, so, I like, I would. But, you know, well, maybe, well, maybe we'll watch this space. What do we have on Twitter? Ah, Sophie. Sophie has asked... What do you think you've learned about the publishing industry slash books in general through booktube you never would have known without it? Ooh, I don't, okay, that's difficult because I don't actually know what I knew before. It's hard for me to remember what I knew before. I don't know that I've learned very much. It's like, I, I mean, I know how it works now in terms of like specific publicists working with specific books and I understand about reviews. Um, and you know, sending out arcs to people. Like I understand that process. This is gonna be a bit controversial, I think, being on BookTube, but I'm I'm actually not very interested in publishing as a career or as a industry. Like I'm, in, like, I'm interested, <laughs> that sounds really bad. <laughs> I'm interested in books, I'm interested in reading, I'm interested in getting more people to read and promoting literature and books. I'm all about that. Um, and I love when publishers do events or like there's being book prizes and all of this kind of stuff. I'm down with that, but I'm not interested in publishing as a career, I guess. Like if I, like I'm not interested in how that process works because I wouldn't want to be part of that. I've, maybe I shouldn't have drunk this, but I will say like you can be a creative person and be interested in creative arts and, and want that to be a good thing. And at the same time, not want to work in a creative industry. And like, this isn't the question, but I'm going off on a different tangent now. When I was at university and like, when I was at school, I did not understand that because I thought I had to, like if something was my passion, I had to live it. And if I liked theater or if I liked books or like, I was like, oh, that's what I'll do. I'll work as a publishers um, because I really like reading. Um, but it's, it's really okay to not wanna do that and to not be interested in that side of it. And I did do work experience as a publisher when I was at uni as well. Like I, I really thought that's what I would wanna do. One interest doesn't have to define your whole life. Um, what, like whatever that is, like whatever it is, you don't have to be like, oh, I really love gardening. So therefore I will be a gardener and then run my own floristry business. And then also I have an Instagram dedicated to flowers. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, but you don't have to like really you know, you don't have to love something that much. Maybe I don't love anything. Maybe this is my problem. I, I feel like, I act like I love all these things, but maybe, maybe I don't actually love anything. <laughs> I think I'm at the end of my questions. I hope I'm at the end of my questions because even though I'm not at the end of my drink, I don't think I should have any more. Just, just the feeling I'm getting. Oh, I love this. Um, what novel or poetry collection would you be interested in seeing adapted into a ballet performance? Oh, I really like, that's a nice, I'll end on that. That's a nice question. Um, although I don't know that I have an answer for it. So that's, <laughs> that's a bit of a shame. I was talking with my friend Stephen last night because we went to see Swan Lake and he was saying that he thinks the railway children would be a really good ballet um, because it's very English and you've got all the kids and you know, that'd be a good one to take children to. You have a big lavish set with like a steam engine. And I think that's a good idea actually. But the problem with ballet is that the stories are always based around dancing and it's so funny. There's no plot, it's just let's dance for the sake of dancing. And you also need like a really big chorus of people. Um, so I don't know what kind of book would have that amazing oh oh my god Anna Karenina would be good because there's lots and lots of different characters but do they do big chorus scenes kind of like when they're ice skating or when they're at, and when they're at balls and stuff that'd be good and it's got all the high drama of like the love and everything you could have some really good part it is it'd be a bit like um miling that's what I'm kind of imagining or like Manon it'd be a bit like that 
but anachron yeah that'd be that might already be a ballet but um yes okay that's my answer well done lauren thank you for joining me and thank you for you know subscribing thank you for being here thank you for watching i mean like I don't, I don't really like it when other YouTubers go on about like, oh, thank you for 20,000, but thank you for 20,000 subscribers. Like, it is really nice. And it doesn't really mean anything because, you know, it's just like a weird milestone number, but it's still nice to celebrate it. And it's, you know, it's great that people want to watch. I mean, I don't know why, but, th but thank you. Thank you for being here. I will see you in another video. I can't remember what the next video is going to be. What's it going to be? It's not on my phone, I don't know why I'm looking at my phone. Um, I think it's gonna be in a week's time though. And I can't remember what it's gonna be. So, ooh, surprises for everybody. <laughs> so have a nice rest of the week and I'll see you then. Bye. That's my thumbnail, I decided this. Oh, editing Lauren, you poor thing.